This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So uh, coming up July 23rd and 24th, uh, Saturday and Sunday at Boston University, just across the river over there. Uh, we have recently extended our call for speakers. So we got a lot of great speakers. We're trying to find, uh, the way I would describe it is the right balance of local talents versus folks who are on what I call the WordCamp circuit. So there are a lot of folks who are sort of giving the same talk in cities throughout the US on WordCamps. Their videos are often available on WordCamp and so we're sort of more interested in building some local talent and, and really showing off. So what we're especially interested in uh, from a WordCamp perspective is more of the practical talks. We've gotten a lot of good talks from developers and designers. And less talks that are sort of more uh, business user oriented, admin user oriented, more about how you're using WordPress in a way that supports your business that might be, say, beyond just blogging. Um, so we're doing some, some speaker outreach, but the call for speakers is still open until the 28th of May. Tickets are on sale now, uh, $40 general admission fee, $30 for students, $80 for those of you like myself who want to be patrons and uh, support the community. Uh, parking's available for $6 each day. You can buy it when you buy your ticket. Uh, it is a game day for the Sox that weekend. Is that parking in Boston and stuff? <laughs> that is that parking is actually in it's Boston. It's for parking in Boston. On the Boston University campus. Only valid with a WordCamp Boston ticket, so don't go try to just buy parking and we'll start parking in Boston for the day. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Uh, 2011.boston.wordcamp.org is the site. You'll see more posts going up there this week. We are also actively continuing our search for sponsors. So if you are a company or work for a company that makes its living in part with WordPress, sponsorship is, uh, as is sponsoring WordCamp, a great opportunity to show your support, get your name out in front of the community. Uh, there's information on sponsorship on that side as well. If you have any questions, you can email me. I'm at jackman on Twitter, or you can email bostonnetworkcamp.org, and that will reach us all eventually. Kurt and James are also co-organizers along with me, so it's a, a crowd you'll be familiar with if you've been to a lot of meetings. Um, again, I wanna, we want to plug this live WP TV um, because we don't really get a chance to talk to everybody at the meetups. Um, you know, this is really formal. We wanted to try and kick it off, um, have an informal setting. We've been visiting local bars, so grab some appetizers, grab some beers, come talk WordPress with us. Um, we usually have topics on hand, but if you want to submit a topic, you want a question answered, feel free to email us. We'll be able to answer for you live audience or live stream. Um, and I want to also shout out, I think it's in the next slide too, that um, we will be starting a, our second public uh, filming. We don't know the venue yet, we have a couple in mind. Um, the date is also unknown, but I know the link will be livewptv6.eventbrite.com. Um, it's about a max of 25, 30 people, and this month we're actually going to be giving 
John Bishop, you'll be talking about short codes.
the features. This is our features bar right here. If I don't want this here, I can either move it to the disabled section or I can move it down to the bottom wherever I want. Uh, we also have our boxes and features. But if you happen to want a sidebar on your home page, you can actually drag and drop. And once you drag and drop, it automatically saves it for you. All we have to do is refresh. And you know, there's our boxes. Our three columns happens to be right now set to our footer, so you can change that later. And then we have our carousel and move on to posts and uh, content. Um, we have soap boxes. Um, I'm not going to go into breadcrumbs. And then we have banners. Again, every time you say, every time you drag and drop, it automatically saves for you. And So those boxes are customizable. Um, it doesn't have to be your most recent posts. Um, maybe they, they, they might be for categories, you know, um, and you can just have a link for your category and say, you know, these are my top three categories. You know, I love, I love cooking, I love eating. Um, just go with all that and stuff like that. So, so but what about existing posts? Let's say we've got an old theme and we put a new theme to it. What does, what's it going to do with the posts? I actually don't know about importing posts.
it's nice, you know, um, I know you can do this with thesis. Um, you can change your colors. You can change the, the color of your background, your text. Um, even the fonts, um, they, they, they let you do a lot of font customization. Um, you can even add your own fonts. Right, oh, sorry. Here it is, type kit font replacement. So if you don't like any of the typical normal fonts, go online, search for it. You can import it yourself. Um, and, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of give and take here for this. So this is just the main page that I'm showing here. This is the home page. For each individual post page or um, um, yeah, post page, it's just going to be pretty much your post, and you can decide whether or not you want to hide all these boxes, or the, um, or the carousel or the features page. Um, but otherwise, you know, this is, I think, there was so much of this that I, I really couldn't show everything in 15 minutes. And when I was going through this at home, that's why we created this. Like, it, this is something where I feel this is something that you should try out for yourself. Um, just fool around with it and you know, have some fun. for what the community is like or what the customer, the, the tech support on this would be? Um, they have their own forms and they have their own uh, support. I don't know how in-depth they go into. Um, I know somewhere like, like Genesis has a huge support form. I, it's not as big as that. Definitely it's not as big as that. What's the site on page one? Yeah, I know. <laughs> there are there are other um, frameworks that do let you create your own templates. You know, Builder is one of them. Um, and I know with Builder, you know, I think when we go into this in August, you can make hundreds of different templates and call them out with different pages or even different posts, and then you can you can use that. Unfortunately, not. This is pretty much standard. Okay. Just trying to. I, I think. I, th I think for most people, you know, for the home page, you know, they want it not to look like a blog, right? You want to look like your own site, something different, and this does give you that that ability, so that it doesn't look like every typical site out there. Um, I know there's a demo somewhere, but I I'll have to find it maybe towards the towards towards the end. I'll I'll show you a site that's built on. So it does. It has its own. You know, it has the same posts. Um, this features bar is really great. It's vibrant, especially if you put pictures. Uh, some of your featured stories, and it does. I think when I when I did mine, and you can customize the headlines as well. You know, I had the small text and then a bigger headline in the front. You can use different headers within the actual title bar. And
Blogger. Uh, they also have a couple of other platforms out, like Scribe SEO. Um, they just came out with a new uh, squeeze page called Premise. So they're, they're pretty active, uh, third tribe marketing as well, and a couple other things. So they're a pretty interesting group of people. Um, so the way that Genesis is constructed, it's, it's kind of, it goes in a couple different directions, but the primary way that they use Genesis is it's, uh, it's a parent and child theme. So what you basically get is Genesis is your kind of core structure, and then they have a bunch of different uh, child themes that you can build from to just kind of really make it um, sing. Most of the people who, who focus on web development, they tend to build their own child theme from Genesis, um, which I think is probably the way to go, but it is fairly complex. So this right here is out of the box. Um, this is the corporate theme. You can see the, the way they, uh, it's not too different from the demo. It, was, uh, you know, it wasn't too hard to make that happen. I think it looks very light, to be honest. Uh, I think they charge something like 80 bucks for this, which includes the skin plus uh, Genesis, an unlimited use of both of those. Uh, and then they have a bunch of other skins, which I'll show you shortly. Um, so the first thing I kind of noticed when I got into this was in order to get the menu to work, you have to use the custom menus, um, which was a little bit new for me. And uh, you know, I got through it, but um, it was pretty. It was pretty nice to actually get to do that for the first time. So you can see, um, show you the menu. This one is just kind of goes, makes a new tab. You can kind of set that up to do that. Um, here's some with, it's not coming up. There we go. Some sub nabs, and then you create a secondary navigation bar too, which is the category pages. Um, another thing that is, I guess, a little strange is this slider is actually not part of the theme. It's a third party plugin. Um, it wasn't critical, but it just kind of wasn't expecting that. Um, but it does work. It took me a little while to figure out how to make it work, but I ended up getting it to work. Uh, but let me back up real quick and just talk a little bit about the parent-child theme. The reason that they do this is um, they suggest that you don't really customize Genesis at all. So whenever they put up a new upgrade, your, your core WordPress is going to be safe. And they ask you to do all of your customization on the child theme, so that that'll take precedence, but uh, that way you won't, um, I guess, break the core theme. Um, one thing I did this afternoon, which uh, when I was getting ready to kind of go through my notes and whatnot, is um, I went into the dashboard and I just started kind of hopping around the themes that I have here. Um, and uh, when I went back and did the Genesis install just to see what it looked like, then I came back from corporate and it actually um, scrubbed my home page. So that was, uh, you know, I'd done it a couple times over the weekend, so it's just kind of a little bit unnerving, but not the hugest thing. I'm guessing it was something I did more than the theme. Um, but it is something certainly to talk about, especially if you're maybe uh, don't build websites regularly, that, that could be pretty stressful if that were to happen. Um, in Genesis, they have a, a number of just kind of, you know, what have yous of how you want to make your site look. And this, uh, this whole tab is actually available in the Genesis setting as well. But um, you can see that, you know, include primary navigation and advanced drop downs, yes, and then enable the second um, secondary navigation. I'm not sure why those aren't checked automatically, but um, nonetheless, still pretty interesting. The SEO settings is obviously something that they um, spend a lot of time on. Um, you can see right here, if you want to buy a scribe, they'll give you a discount code just by owning uh, one of their themes. Um, but, you know, these guys are very sophisticated when it comes to SEO and, and how to put together copy. You spend a lot of time doing that. If you any of you visit copy blog where you get a, a sense of uh, how sharp these guys are, it's a site that I actually spend a lot of time on. Um, and so I won't bump 
for all the settings, but if you do have a, a plugin that you like more than theirs, they'll allow you to, to use that, and that'll take priority over their SEO. Um, they've introduced hooks. Um, they didn't really get into hooks. I did a few silly ones just to kind of see what it looks like. Um, and then there's a hooks plugin. So you can see, like, right here, it's Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you drop that in by using hooks, Yeah, so, you know, relatively easy to do. Uh, hooks sometimes can be intimidating, and if you're gonna spend time on Genesis, the, the way they typically suggest to, to use hooks is to go into the, uh, the PHP and, and to do it from there. That, that can be a little bit confusing, so if you're not up to the task, definitely go and get the plugin, and uh, it's, uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty nice little feature. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a Genesis hooks. So, it's, um, so yeah, it's in the WordPress. Um, so let's just take a look at some of the pages. Let me just show you when you make a new page, some of the settings that they give you um, for a page.
buy just one, yeah. If you wanted to just buy Genesis, I think Genesis sells for 60 bucks. Um, like you said earlier, the, the nice thing about Genesis is um, you get a lot of these things, but if you're not at the place of, uh, in terms of developing, you're going to have a, a hard time. So you're probably going to want to get a child skin on top of that. So like the corporate theme that they gave us was $80 see for a lot of the featured sites that, they're, that they've chosen, these are all, most of them are built, uh, the theme is just Genesis, and so the developer created a kind of a proprietary theme for that. Um, I thought the documentation was okay. Truthfully, um, I thought the, the forum was a lot better in terms of discovering things, but, you know, there's a fair amount in here, as you can see, that the first thing they tell you in the documentation is how to set up the navigation, because that might be new to a lot of people. Um, I think they said there's something like 50,000 downloads of this, so you can imagine the forum is uh, pretty vibrant. Um, and, you know, because they gave it, because they donated this, I elected not to post any questions on the forum, um, but I did find the answers to all my questions and then some there. Uh, I've done several sites with uh, Studio Press and uh -huh. support is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. People will comment pretty close right away to help you do any of the coding. So it's, it's pretty quick and it's good. And I, I think that's a big value add for, for virtually anyone just to 
Pro Plus is just all the themes yeah, lumped together. have so many out there that you could just go through and uh, take a look. And I think build, I think iThemes also has um, a lot of child themes, but not as many as uh, Studio Press and Woo. I think if I think this has quite as much of child themes. Yes. Thank you. 
documentation. You, you have to join the, uh, the club to get the documentation. So if you, if you know what you're doing with it, you can get away for free. But otherwise, it's $25 a year, and you get the framework itself and all the fees. Um, let's see, so I'm just going to talk about. Uh, so here's a quick demo of what happens when you actually get the thing wired up. Um, it's certainly a lot different than what you saw previously. It's not very pretty, but what this is is this is all the essential stuff that you need to get the theme running. Um, what's great about this is, let's see, there's a second thing I want to talk about here, is the, um, the layouts. So, so what I have here is I have um, an FTP session open right into the server. I have all my files here. Um, this is something where you would be familiar with if, you, if you're building your own theme. Um, if, you, if you know how to do this type of stuff, we work with this uh, Installing themes, you can install themes now through the WordPress admin, but a lot of people kind of do this sort of old school way, copy the files and, and stuff like that. So what happens is um, here's what you get right out of the box, and what's great about this is they give you. Oops, sorry, I got two. Can you, can you guys see that? Cool. Um, well, what's good about this is they give you all of these different CSS um, libraries that you can start with. So there's Let's see, there's a reset, which basically sets all the spacing and all the alignment and everything to zero. So you can kind of start from a clean slate with all your browsers like Internet Explorer and Firefox. They treat that stuff differently. Um, they give you a couple things like, you know, you can, you can change the font sizes. Um, you can make the drop downs work. And then they have this sort of convention where they, they give you these files for different layouts. So this would be a two column left and then fixed width layout. So if you if you enable that, that's what you're seeing here. Um, let's see, turn this to R. We'll save that file. Refresh it. And now we have sort of this sidebar on the left. So, what does all this mean? You can't do all that stuff, um, you know, the back end and the options panel and things like that. But if you're going to try to build this from scratch, um, you're going to have so, a lot of different files and a lot of different things that you're going to have to do every time. This as a framework for a custom theme is great, and it takes all that stuff out, out of the mix. You can, let's see, they have a three column center. And now you've got sort of a center layout with two sidebars. Um, this stuff's all documented. There's a slew of different style sheets that they provide, which is, which is great. Um, Thing on your site, so it's great for SEO. Um, 
page. So you can use this page, you can clone it, you can make you know, a bunch of them. This is just a starting point, but this would be shown to anybody that's um, only if they're logged into your site. So that's cool if you want to see other content that you want to be shown there. Um, it's great to use that. I couldn't fit them all, so I added this side right here. It's, uh, some, some more. There's daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly um, for all your posts. There's bookmarks. Short codes. Let's see. Yeah, example. So he adds a couple of short codes just for convenience. If you guys don't know what short codes are, basically what they are is um, while you're in the post editor screen, um, while you're writing, you can in um, brackets you can write um, some piece of text in, within these square brackets. And if you have a plugin enabled, if your theme is enabled to uh, do something with this certain short code, it will uh, when the post actually gets rendered to the visitor, it will show something different. So, so some examples are, let me actually edit this page. So here's an example. Um, this one's called site dash link. So you're probably wondering, why would I use a short code to do that? Um, a lot of people in their post area, they make a link, they make links like around their site, and they, if they move their site, those links become broken. So he's, he's provided this little thing where you, if you type this, um, when it gets rendered, it will replace it with the name of your site and the correct link all the time, programmatically. So it's kind of a convenient thing. Um, he has a couple others that are like query counter. You can put that there. It'll say like how fast, it, how long it took the page to load, and how many database queries. But good and more for debugging. Um, one thing that's really cool though is that so recently WordPress added this feature called menus, where you can create um, all these menus. Just 
a couple more fields, uh, some control that gives you over uh, each one of your posts and some control of the SEO stuff that you wouldn't normally need your plugin for. So really it's like we just have this one theme and we, we don't have any dependency on all these other plugins. Uh, he also has this thing called extensions. I'll show you that real quick. Um, so something you mentioned earlier, the functions PHP file, it's kind of like what controls a lot of the dynamic stuff that goes on in your, in your site. Um, a lot of stuff is really well documented. Uh, it's code, but you know, don't, don't be scared by it. Just, there's a lot of documentation, and it's pretty easy to read. And he'll just mention to you, like, here's the extension section. There's a cool thing called breadcrumbs. Uh, if you want to enable that, you just uncomment it by taking those dashes away, and you save it. So now any page that, uh, that, that calls out breadcrumbs will be, now, so now it starts to show those breadcrumbs. And that's, that's baked into his theme. There's no plugins, there's, there's nothing. Um, and it's actually pretty sophisticated. This guy, I don't know if I mentioned his name, is Justin Tadlock. He's, I think, a core developer. He's written a, a lot of great books. He's really tuned into the community. So it's the stuff that he, the work that he produces is, is really up to date. It's, it's pretty solid. It's often better than some of the plugins that you'll get. So James, that last file that you edited would be kind of a config file. And then I'm just wondering, as Justin creates updates to some of the other files, how do you reconcile? He'll ship um, libraries that do new things, and then he'll say, like, add this one line. And if I say, you so know. you just manually keep your config file up to date? Yep. You do all the extra functionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so functions.php is like a special file in any theme. And it, it can, it, it, nothing really gets, it's not a page template, or nothing gets really shown to the user. It kind of activates and deactivates and attaches new functions to WordPress. So, um, and it's always called functions. Normally, you can edit the functions.php through the theme editor um, within the, the WordPress admin dashboard. Um, the only reason why we can is because this is a multi-user site, and that I, they actually prohibit that. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, so there's, there's usually an editor box here, so you can get all this stuff right in the dashboard, so you don't need a separate plugin. Um, just, I guess, preference for how you would work. But, let's see, the last one um, was community. I, blog is great. If you ever want to get into sort of more advanced WordPress stuff, definitely follow and you use their specific hooks and all their menus and all their 
you're getting locked into that vendor's product, which is, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if you know from start to finish, I want a site that kind of looks like what PageFly gives me, that's what it's going to be. Then that's going to save you a lot of time to go in this group. But if you have a totally custom project, you want to be agile, you want to be locked into a certain theme, you might change the theme, um, you want to be able to edit some code, but you don't want to have to do it from the ground up, I would definitely recommend it. So, not this is a loaded question, but this versus thesis, who wins? I mean, it's sort of the, it's a different type of yeah, totally different type of thing. Um, I've seen, I mean, a lot of people seem to be going with using a, a framework like this, and I've seen, from what I've heard, that thesis is the most popular one to go with, that people use that as their foundation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen a lot of people do some, some great stuff with thesis. I've seen people that really know thesis, like, wield it very well, but they've spent a lot of time on the forums. They, they know all the hooks, they know all the nuances, they watch all the videos. They've spent a lot of hours so look, researching one particular product, so they're, they're good with it. Um, no matter what, though, the thesis, a lot of the thesis sites, unless you're like a pro, they kind of tend to look the same. So um, you're buying into a little bit more of a framework in that case, but this is more raw, just... Yeah, this is raw. I mean, if you, if you know you have to build something that, you're looking at thesis, and you're looking at all the different things, and you're like, wow, I'm really going to have to start gutting things and moving, and it just doesn't make sense to start with that, I don't think. Um, I don't think that's the case. Well, I was going to say, it, it's... I'm, I'm going to guess your background is probably a, a traditional IT designer type of background. Yeah, or, or like so, just so coding from scratch. So. Right, so you would be very, very comfortable with this. I can see how you'd be a jack about this, mm -hmm. in fact, right? The libraries, and, sure. the, and you could start with a blank slate and, and build from there. Um, I would be incredibly intimidated by something like this. I couldn't even do this. But give me thesis, which I've, I've already developed a number of sites on and I can do a pretty good job there. So I think it really depends on, on what it is that you're coming from, the type of tool so that you're willing to build on. All right, so I'm very new to WordPress in terms of development, but I have a pretty strong development background in general, not so much on the design mm -hmm. side. Yeah. So I'm kind of in the camp that says, well, hybrid is something I would rather use because now I can totally control the output that's gonna be generated, but I get the, the WordPress back end and everything that it automatically does. So thesis is a little leads more toward you've kind of got it templated out for you already. Now you're just filling the gaps. Well with they have some a framework now. With some flexibility right. obviously. I mean I, I I've seen enough variation of design on any of these platforms. Yep. You know, I think that's the, the creativity that you've put into it, you know, to develop your site using any of these tools is really up to the individual. Um, and, and uh, I think that will continue to, to be the case, but um, I'm, I'm not concerned, and by the way, I'm not saying this is the right way or the wrong way, I, I just don't know enough to be concerned about, let's say, all the use of all the plugins and, and a lot of the overhead that maybe you get using Thesis. You're obviously very energized by the fact this could be very thin and, and be very, very light and probably be a lot faster. That's that's a very important consideration. I, I think yeah. you, again, you have to come at it from different points oh, of that's view. That's why I ask. I, I, mean yeah. it, it, I think the only way you're going to really know yourself is to try them both and dig in and uh, try out a project right. uh, both ways and see which I mean, one sounds like a better one. I mean, certainly, thesis is popular and successful, and it sounds like this is sounds like you could be very successful with it. Um, so. You could be successful with either one, so it's just a matter of your preferences and, and what your right. project is about, um, and, and choosing the right one. But this this one sounds like it could do things. You know, we're, we're three or four years ago, WordPress was primarily still a blogging platform, and so it, it's expanded to general CMS, and, and people are doing all kinds of sites with it. This could take it even to that next level because it's a little bit well, more again, my, program my experience oriented. has been most of these tools can really take it to the next level if you put. That's what WordPress allows you. WordPress is not a blogging site. It's, it's a right. development platform, and it's very extendable. Um, uh, last month, David gave a great presentation on Headway, and I gave the presentation on Thesis. He actually convinced me, based on what he was showing, that I should try out Thesis, uh, Headway, and I, I just did my own personal site using Headway. I was very impressed by the visual control that you have on it. It's a very different way to build the site. Um, and, and it's much more natural for me 
coming from backgrounds where I'm, I'm used to <laughs> doing PowerPoint presentations or you know keynote where you just you know you drag something around, you move it, you, you build it around that way. Headway actually is very nice from that point of view, but it probably um, is very restrictive on other things that are equally important, probably even more important to some people. So you, you really have to sort of like that's the advantage of doing these bake offs is you kind of get to see a little Why bit about it, and then you got to try it. There's no right or wrong. There's no winner in, in any of these. If you're able to make that tool do what you want to do and do it in a creative way, the, the, that's the tool for you to use. Yeah. yeah, it's just interesting for me. It seems like all of these developers are competing for your attention. Like, this is the right way to do it. This is the best way to do it. This is the easiest way. And me, I always seem to fight the framework. So none of them give me the control. So I guess that puts me in a certain bucket where I have to have a certain level of control and it has to be fine grained, but I don't want to spend the time learning how thing the vendor's way, so if I know how to do it, I just want to jump in the cloud and get um, I see people use all the frameworks, and it's just, you pick one, you learn it, and you can pretty much do anything with any of them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can't answer my question, but it seems like, from your description, it's like this kind of, a developer's framework. If you're used to building suite, suite, um, things from scratch, then this gives you all of that control yep. with the benefits of the framework. Yep, and you don't have to put like all that initialization code to make the theme work, you don't have to go and try to figure out all these problems.